Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. Seneca Memento mori is a Latin phrase that translates to, remember, you must die. It is an artistic or symbolic reminder of the inevitability of death. The expression memento mori developed with the growth of Christianity, which emphasized heaven, hell, and salvation of the soul in the afterlife. The Stoics of classical antiquity were particularly prominent in their use of this discipline, and Seneca's letters are full of injunctions to meditate on death. The Stoic Epictetus told his students that when kissing their child, brother, or friend, they should remind themselves that they are mortal, curbing their pleasure, as do those who stand behind men in their triumphs, and remind them that they are mortal. From the beginning of time to the end of days, death is the one universal, inescapable commonality. Kings or peasants, brilliant or stupid, everyone dies or is dead. Some try not to think about it. But for others, the certainty of death is kept at the forefront of their thought. Why? So that they might truly feel alive. With all of our technological, surgical, pharmaceutical inventions and devices, we expect and hope to live for a long time, live it in good health, and look good doing it. We live in denial that we are all going to die sooner or later. But past civilizations, from the ancient Greeks to the Victorians, were acutely aware of their own mortality. Memento mori was the philosophy of meditating on your own death as a form of spiritual practice and rejecting earthly vanities. In his famous book, Meditations, Marcus Aurelius wrote to himself, You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. The emperor considered it a priority to keep death at the forefront of his thoughts. In doing so, the world's most powerful man managed the obligations of his position, guided by living virtuously. Epictetus would ask his students, Do you then ponder how the supreme of human evils, the surest mark of the base and cowardly, is not death, but the fear of death? And begged them to discipline yourself against such fear, direct all your thinking, exercises, and reading this way, and you will know the only path to human freedom. The Stoics used this concept to invigorate life and to create priority and meaning, and reminded themselves constantly to not waste any time in the day on the trivial and vain. Memento Mori is believed to have originated from an ancient Roman tradition. It is told that after a major military victory, the triumphant generals were paraded through the streets to the roars of the masses. The ceremonial procession could span the course of a day with the military leader riding in a chariot drawn by four horses. There was not a more coveted honor. The general was idolized, viewed as divine, and sometimes even as a god by his troops and the public alike. But riding in the same chariot, standing just behind the worshipped general, was a slave. The slave's sole responsibility for the entirety of the procession was to whisper in the general's ear continuously, Look behind. Remember thou art mortal. Remember you must die. The slave served to remind the victor at the peak of glory this godlike adoration would soon end while the truth of his mortality remained. In modern times, we don't like to think too much about death. It's a bit too depressing and anxiety-provoking for our think-positive culture, which is devoted to perpetuating the lie that you can stay young forever and that your life will go on and on. While memento mori has fallen from consciousness compared to its historical relevance, mortality motivation is practiced modernly in fueling and inspiring successful artists, entrepreneurs, 
athletes, authors, among others. Steve Jobs famously said, Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There's no reason not to follow your heart. Famous life coach, author, and entrepreneur Tony Robbins has said, There's something coming for all of us. It's called death. Rather than fearing it, it can become one of our greatest counselors. So, if this was the last week of your life, what would you cherish most? How would you live? How would you love? What truth would you tell today? When serial entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk was asked to give three words of inspiration, he said, You're gonna die. He explained this later by saying, The reason I believe in it is because it's ultimately practical. It's the guiding light and the fire and ambition that drives me toward legacy and living my best life. The typical person doesn't think about death at all because it's uncomfortable, sad, or scary. Fortunately, we're no longer cavemen afraid that we're going to be eaten by a lion or ancient Romans afraid we'll be murdered by some barbarian. Unfortunately, however, as the world has gotten safer and better, we start to think that we're going to live forever and that things are always going to go exactly our way. The Stoics would say that death is what gives our life the ultimate meaning. It's the cap at the end that helps us make the most of the time we've been given. If you think that meditating on your mortality is only depressing, then you completely miss the point. It is, in fact, a tool to create priority, meaning, and happiness. It's a tool that generations have used to create real perspective and urgency to treat our time as a gift, be grateful for every single moment and not waste it on the trivial and vain. Death doesn't make life pointless, but rather purposeful. And fortunately, we don't have to nearly die to tap into this. A simple reminder can bring us closer to living the life we want. It doesn't matter who you are or how many things you have left to be done. A car can hit you in an intersection and drive your teeth back into your skull. That's it. It could be all over. Today, tomorrow, someday soon. The Stoic finds this thought invigorating and humbling. It is not surprising that one of Seneca's biographies is titled Dying Every Day. After all, it is Seneca who urged us to tell ourselves, you may not wake up tomorrow when going to bed, and you may not sleep again when waking up as reminders of our mortality. Or, as another Stoic, Epictetus, used to urge his students, Keep death in exile before your eyes each day, along with everything that seems terrible. By doing so, you'll never have a base thought, nor will you have excessive desire. Use those reminders and meditate on them daily. Let them be the building blocks of living your life to the fullest and not wasting a second. The truth is, we've all been given a fatal diagnosis. The doctor who pulled you out of your mother knew for certain that you were going to die. He just didn't know exactly when, and neither do you. So don't waste time on stupid, pointless things. Don't take for granted the time you have on this planet and make the most out of every single moment you get in life. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more daily content.